Now we're going to talk about systems that firms use to incorporate and connect non-financial performance measures and financial performance measures. Generically, these systems are referred to as strategic performance measurement systems. So what is this really? Well, it's a model or a framework that the firm uses that explicitly links a firm's strategy to the related performance measures. In other words, it's a map. The purpose of a strategic performance measurement system is usually threefold. First, it communicates strategy to the managers and employees throughout the firm. Second, it enables an evaluation of strategy to let the firm know whether or not the strategy being implemented is being effective. And this ultimately allows for the strategy to evolve over time, for the firm to improve or change its strategy in the future. Now, there are many different types of strategic performance measurement systems. This comes from practitioner readings and consultants. One very famous type is referred to as the balanced scorecard. There are many different types as well beyond the balanced scorecard, specifically the performance prism and the performance pyramid value chain scoreboard, the customer equity model, and the performance dashboard. These are just a few of the strategic performance measurement systems that consultants and practitioners have suggested would benefit firms. We're going to focus on what is arguably the most popular version of the strategic performance measurement system, specifically the balanced scorecard. This is a very popular strategic performance measurement system. It establishes objectives and measures and links them to the strategy of the firm or the business unit. Oftentimes, a firm with multiple business units will have multiple versions of a balanced scorecard that are specific to each of its major divisions. The evolution of the balanced scorecard is actually quite interesting. It started off by just offering a more balanced view of the firm. Historically, firms overemphasize financial performance, and it's kind of odd to say now, but somebody needs to tell them that they're overly focused on financial performance measures and that non-financial performance measures and other aspects of their business are just as important. Then they, the balanced scorecard evolved into adopting more strategic perspectives. And from there, the balanced scorecard incorporated strategy maps and more explications about linking objectives, initiatives, and measures. Just recently, firms are evolving to incorporate the balanced scorecard into their incentive compensation system. And some interesting research focuses on that. Basically, the balanced scorecard is comprised of four perspectives. There is the age-old tradition of focusing on something that is more financial. Financial-oriented goals and accompanying measures are developed. And the questions inside of that perspective are, how should we look to our shareholders? What are our goals in terms of financial returns? There are also internal perspectives. In the, the right-hand side, the right box of this diamond, talks about goals and measures that ask, what must we excel at? This is more of an internal perspective and has to do with the operations and processes that allow the firm to implement its, and pursue its strategy. There's also a customer perspective, seen on the left-hand side of this depiction. There are goals and measures that are adopting the customer perspective, which asks, how should we look to our customers? Common measures inside of this perspective are customer satisfaction measures and the percentage of, measure, percentage of customers that return. And finally, there's more of a long-term perspective, one that's innovation or development or learning. The questions asked there are, how can we continue to improve and create value? Different measures correspond to each of these individual perspectives. But ideally, they're all linked to facilitate the the, the compilation of non-financial and financial performance metrics and facilitate the development and pursuit of the firm's strategy. Here's an example, which I won't take the time to walk through every ultimate detail here, but you can see along the left-hand side, SMDC, a company uh, in the real world that has adopted the balanced scorecard. They have a mission statement that reads, SMDC is a values-driven, integrated organization which will be recognized for excellence in customer service, quality patient care, financial strength, and support of community health. You can see the multiple perspectives right inside their mission statement. But the balance scorecard ex extends well beyond this. On the left-hand side, you can see the financial, customer, internal, and learning and growth or innovation perspectives. 
and they have incorporated somewhat of a strategy map, as depicted by the arrows that connect different levels or different perspectives and cross those dotted lines that separate them. So this slide will be available for you to review, as well as you can look to the, ulti the, the original resource for this slide, a book by Robert Kaplan and David Norton. Now, the question is, how well are firms using this tool? Well, there is some research on Balanced Scorecard, actually quite a bit, that is performed by academics to see the implications and the consequences associated with a firm adopting the Balanced Scorecard. This research, or an example of it, has shown a, a few mixed results. First of all, firms, long before it was suggested, tie compensation to the Balanced Scorecard. Eighty percent of these of firms that were surveyed do this in some form or fashion. Less than 30% of the firms implementing the balanced scorecard explicitly define a causal chain. That is, they don't necessarily connect the perspectives with explicit arrows like we saw in SM SDMC's example. Only 21% of those with a causal chain actually test its validity. Most of the firms just rely on what they feel is the right strategy and how these things can be connected but very few actually do the testing. But research suggests that when a firm does actually test the causal linkages between non-financial performance measures and financial performance measures, they actually earn better financial performance. Of the 21% that tested its validity, they had an average of a 2.95% higher return on assets and over 5% higher return on equity than those that did not test the causal chain. So, Implemented appropriately, the balanced scorecard can actually yield very significant returns. There are some challenges with the balanced scorecard, however. First of all, it incorporates many different measures. Again, when we open the door to the non-financial view of the firm and these alternative perspectives of customer, internal, and innovation or learning and growth, it's difficult to deal with all those individual measures, and it's difficult to evaluate the relative importance of those measures. Quantifying qualitative data is oftentimes difficult as well. So just to create those non-financial metrics and incorporate them and find connections between them can be very taxing. It's very time and expense, uh, it's very timely, time consuming and expensive to implement the balanced scorecard. And there can be some gaming of the system. The more measures you put in front of managers and employees, the more likely they're trying to manipulate those measures. And of course, there are problems with the causal chain. Firms never really know for sure about the link between non-financial measures and financial measures. Again, oftentimes due to a variety of, of factors. One, the linkages might be non-linear or they may not be unidirectional. The causal linkages between non-financial measures and financial measures may actually be looped. There also may be more noisy measures, especially when we're talking about non-financial metrics. And of course, there is the time lag. And Testing causal chains over multiple years when it takes a non-financial metric to ultimately transform into financial performance can be very difficult and taxing as well.